to the wives married to someone with PTSD. It's not your fault. It's not your fault that your husband has PTSD. It's not your fault that he has irritability. It's not your fault that he has anger. It's not your fault that he has depression, that he has panic attacks. It's not your fault that you feel like you're walking on eggshells. As a soldier, we go through a lot of training and we go through these deployments. And these, these trainings and these deployments change you as a man. And I'm only speaking as a man because I, I can't speak on as a woman. I don't know what it's like for a woman to go through this stuff, but I can speak on this part. And coming back from deployments, you're a different person. Everyone tells you you're a different person. You feel like a different person. You feel like you're in a place that you don't really belong. When you come home, you feel out of place. And it's unnerving. It's stressful. Sometimes you don't know how to cope with it. A lot of times people resort to drinking, um, other things that they probably shouldn't be doing to cope that aren't healthy. And the wives struggle with this. They try to support their, their, their they try to support their husbands, but they don't know how to handle it. They try to hold the house together, raising the kids, trying to support their husbands, but they're left with not knowing what to do. And I can only imagine how lonely that feels. Their husband might be not deployed, their, their husband might be home, but they still feel like they're deployed. They still feel like they're gone. Probably worse sometimes when they have to tiptoe around the house, like they're walking on eggshells. They don't want to make their husband upset if he's already irritable. See, deployments change people because you're always redlining yourself while you're gone. You're always thinking, this mission could be the last mission. You're always thinking about death in the back of your mind. On top of the fact that you do see really bad shit over there. You're seeing dead bodies. You're seeing your buddies die. You're seeing whatever the situation is. Very stressful stuff. And as a cop, it's hard for me to speak as a cop because I've only been a cop for four years. I was in the army for 13 years, most of which special forces, two deployments as a Green Beret. I've been a cop for about four years now. And I've seen a fraction of what, what I've seen in the military. But you do see a lot of bad shit as a cop. People don't normally call you if something good is happening. They call you because shit hit the fan and they need you now. So you're always walking into a situation, an unknown situation where you're not sure what's gonna happen. You just know they need you and it's an emergent situation a lot of the times. You're dealing with a lot of death. If there's ever a death, they call the cops, right? So we're seeing death way more than anybody else. We go to all the car accidents. We go to all the domestic situations. We go to all the bad stuff. And then we unfortunately bring that bad stuff home. And it affects, we, even, no matter how hard we try, it still affects us and we still bring it home. And that's the unfortunate thing is sometimes it's impossible to turn it off. And the spouses and the kids get the backlash of that. It's unfair. None of this is fair. But the thing is, we need cops and we need soldiers. And 
the spouses are left with not knowing what to do, how to handle the situation. So a lot of times they are shut down. I can speak on this because I was married for 10 years. The last two years we were separated, so really married eight years. Went through divorce, it was finalized a year ago. And I got custody of the kids. I have them 95% of the time. So I know what it's like to raise kids with these issues. But I was married, I got married 2012 when I came back from Afghanistan. And that's when I realized all my issues were coming out. Got back from the States, very hardcore two deployments, back-to-back -back deployments, both a year long. Didn't know I had the issues I had when I, until I came back and things slowed down. Like I said before, things slowed down in America, but they were still going hundred miles an hour in my head, right? You're always thinking there's threats somewhere and you're always looking over your shoulder, you're hyper vigilant, and it's impossible to stop. So, got married 2012, these issues started coming out, and I never took it out on my wife, never took it out on my wife, never took it out on my kids. I don't yell, I don't cuss, I don't name call. All I would do is shut down. Because I didn't want to affect anyone around me, I would shut down. And I didn't know it at the time, but I was affecting everyone around me. I was affecting my kids, my wife at the time, and I didn't know that until she had left me, right? She left me after a couple years. I don't blame her. She didn't, we didn't get divorced for my issues now. I don't have, I mean, you, these are forever lasting issues, but I'm a lot better now. Um, I've done nothing but tried to improve myself since I found out I had PTSD and all these other issues. But to go back to, to addressing these issues, she felt like she was walking on eggshells. I had no idea. I thought I was doing the best that I could as being a man with PTSD, with anxiety, depression, having panic attacks. I thought I was doing my job as a husband by doing the stuff I was supposed to be doing. I was working, I was coming home. I helped raise my kids. I was one of, I was a hands-on dad. Um, but when I didn't want to affect her and her mood, I would shut down and just keep all my issues to myself, not communicate what was going on, how I was struggling, because I didn't want to affect her. I hate being one of those guys that brings people down. I'd rather be one of those guys that uplifts people that are around me. But it came out when she left that these things happened. And that's when I hit rock bottom. And for some reason, especially men, we only make changes after we hit rock bottom. It's only when we hit rock bottom that we're enlightened by what's going on. So she left, one of the best things that ever happened to me. I was crushed, just like most men are. And it took that realization to fix myself. I've always been huge self-help guy, huge advocate in fixing yourself. No one's gonna fix yourself except you. You have to take the steps to do so. So I was reading books, all the books I could find, PTSD, anxiety, depression, panic attacks, all that stuff. I was reading blogs, going online, researching everything, and I was going to therapy. I was not, against therapy at all because one big reason why I was a mental health specialist before I was a Green Beret. So I knew help, talking helped, I knew it. So going to therapy once a week, I started seeing changes. I started seeing also more issues that I didn't know about. So that's one good thing about therapy is it lets you know other stuff that you don't see and it gives you an objective point of view from another person that is professionally trained in this stuff. So after I started putting the work into myself, real changes were happening. And that's when she came back again. Women 
they don't like to they don't like to wear the pants. They want to be with someone that's wearing the pants that they don't have to take care of. So as a cop, we see all the bad shit. We come home, we're irritable. The wives probably end up shutting down too because they don't want to make things worse. And again, probably the biggest word that I can think of coming from my side as, as a husband or a man is I know that women oftentimes feel lonely. The reason why I bring this up is because I'm going off of my experience. Someone had reached out to me via email and she said, speaking as a wife, she likes some of my content and she said, can you make a video for spouses? And I never thought about it before, but it's a great idea. So I had to put some work into it. I'm a, I'm a week late, unfortunately, I apologize. Um, I'm dealing with sickness in the house. I have four kids. We all had the flu over a two week span and then now we're on to strep throats. So it's been a little bit of a struggle bus. Um, try to find time to do video and raise the kids and work at the same time. But everyone's healthy now, they're at school and I'm able to. So people forget about the wives. Men struggle with these issues and we're trying to figure out how to get better, how to get better, how to get better. Oftentimes wives are forgotten about and this affects them just as much because because I know that they're in pain too. They're in pain seeing their loved ones go through this shit and they don't know what to do. And then oftentimes they do probably the wrong thing. And so I have three things that I know help me. And one is you have to be patient. You have to be patient because most likely he doesn't know what's going on and he does not know how to handle it. And as men, we're supposed to know how to handle any situation and everyone knows we're prideful creatures. So we struggle with knowing what to do. We're, we have these issues in our head and it's almost like we put our, overwork ourselves trying to figure out how to fix it, how to not take it out on our wives, our kids, but we end up doing it anyways. I'm gonna make a separate video for men. This is one, this is one for just the wives. I just want you to know you're not alone. We do see it. We just don't know how to fix it. And it's hard for us to ask for help. We're not supposed to be asking for help. That's why we don't ask for directions if we're lost, right? We're gonna fix it. If we can't fix it, then it messes with us. So taking advice from you is hard because we're supposed to be the ones giving the advice. Men are the providers and pro protectors of the household. And that's our job. Women are the protectors of the soul. And what, my, what I mean by that, if, if we're struggling, we have to be able to come to you. Have to be able to talk about our stuff, but it's gonna be hard at first. It was extremely hard for me to open up in the beginning. The more I talked to therapy, the more I realized, the better I felt. And so when issues would arise at home, I would talk about it and then surprisingly felt better. Each time I talked about it to my spouse, I felt significantly better. It got it off my chest and she understood what I was going through. It got to the point where when anything would arise, when I felt anxious, if I was depressed, whatever situation, if I was having a panic attack, I would tell her or anyone that I'm with as soon as I could, because I knew I would feel better, a lot faster. So number two is we need your reassurance. We live in a day and age where, and I'm not, don't, don't take this the wrong way, I'm going off of stats and everything else, 
that people talk about, but over 50% of marriages end in divorce and about 80% are initiated by women. And with that being said, we need reassurance. We need reassurance that you're not gonna leave when times get tough. I highly doubt a man's ever gonna leave a woman if she had PTSD. A lot of women have PTSD too. And it's about from issues that are not related to these videos, not right now. Um, but a lot of women have PTSD and I don't really see a lot of men leaving women with those issues. I'm not saying that's the only reason why women leave, but in the military, I'm going off of my experience and I'm going off of my military experience, my cop experience. And a lot of women leave when things get hard and they, and they say, you know, let's just say the PTSD. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. And you got a lot of work. Both of you got a lot of work. Um, but if you give that reassurance, then it helps us. So be patient, be there for him when he's struggling and allow him to do the things he needs to do. Don't pressure him into going to therapy. It's going to make it worse. People, men tend to fight against what we're supposed to do. We make our lives harder than it should be. So if you're like, you need to go to therapy, you need to go to therapy, he might know it in his head, but he's going to fight it because you told him to. And we're supposed to be able to fix ourselves. So if you were to give advice, don't be demanding about it. Like, hey, you know, like, I, th I think therapy might be might help you. You know, give him reasons why. Show him video. Show him this video. Show him other videos about guys getting better after going to therapy. Um, and then the last thing, let him do his thing. And that, what I mean by that is I like going to the gym. I feel better when I go to the gym. If I don't hit the gym at least a couple times a week, I'm getting like irritable. It messes with me. And... I don't yell. Again, I don't yell. I don't name call. A lot of men are just like that. They'll shut, they'd rather shut down than do, than do any of that stuff. But I go to the gym and it helps me. It helps my mind and my body. It helps me stay focused. It helps me relax. It lets me get my aggression out. If your man goes to the gym or has a hobby, support him in that. Don't make him feel like shit or make him feel guilty about doing whatever he does. Going bike riding. I, know, I knew some guys that were huge into bike riding. And that was their, their therapy. They don't have to go to therapy to fix themselves, but it helps get another point of view. And to get things to help them that he might not have thought about. But if he's going to the gym, that's therapy in itself. I stopped going to therapy because I got the tools that I needed to fix myself. And I go, I go to the gym. I talk about my stuff. And that's what helps. So again, I want you to be patient and reassure him. Another real quick about reassurance. If they wake up from a night terror or having a panic attack, and you can see it. Reassurance could just be there rubbing his back, letting him know that you're not going anywhere. Cause he's waking up from a scary fucking dream and he's messed up. And if you wake up like, hey, are you okay? I'm here for you, whatever you need. If you need to talk, if you don't need it, if you're not gonna talk, I'm still here, right? Just, just that support right there is enough. Cause his, heart rate is about to, his heart's about to explode out of his chest and then you know support whatever hobby he has i recommend the gym for all men but all men aren't able to work out some they might have some limitations to their workouts because they have injuries 
whatever, but support them in their hobby. Not only allow them to do it, but find ways to help them with it. If it means them buying equipment for their garage to work out instead of going to the gym all the time, allow them to do that. Now I'm not saying this is an excuse to go whatever, you know, go spend all kinds of money on all the guns you want. That way you can go shooting as much as you want. No, like just, you gotta be reasonable about it. And at the same time, men, if, if she allows you that, you better return the favor. So oftentimes what I would do, I worked out whenever I wanted for the most part. Like I said, I was still a hands-on dad. I was still there for the kids. But I allowed, I won't say allowed, allowed is a terrible word. I got what I wanted. She got what she wanted, whenever she wanted. If she's like, can I go out? Yeah, go out, have fun. You decompress too, because you allowed me to decompress. She went on vacations while we were married. She went on vacations at least once a year. She had, there was a couple weddings, you know, throughout the years. She wanted to go home because we're in the military. We're stationed somewhere else from where she was from. She would go with by herself or with the kids. I would take I would hold, take the kids and I would tell her, go see your family, go see your friends. Go out, girls night out. You know, men, you have to reciprocate. If she allows you to go to the gym, you have to do the same for her. So, with that being said, that's basically all I got. There's, I can go on days about this stuff, but I don't wanna overwhelm anyone. And three points is a good start. I'm gonna make a separate video for men, um, but this is more focused on women because you're often forgotten about. Like I said, I'm gonna leave my email at the bottom if you guys want to respond i'm kind of backlogged a little bit and i love it i love people reaching out i love people asking for help there's no money associated to the email at all right so if you email me it's strictly me responding with whatever advice that i can give people and i don't have a website i don't have a lot of things but i want to help so if you email me, it might take a week. It might take two weeks. I'm trying, I have a lot of comments on these, on these videos I'm, I'm trying to catch up on, but just know I do have a busy life. I have all these kids, which I love now, wouldn't change anything for the world, um, but I'm busy. So hit me up and I'm gonna try my best to hit you back as, as soon as I can. If you have ideas of videos that you'd wanna see, I already have a couple people asking for videos. Um, this one was probably the most important that I wanted to reach out first, but I have videos in the workings. Um, so any questions, hit me up.